Good morning. I'm on my way out in a few minutes here. I got a bowl of oatmeal. I'm trying to scarf this down. I'll probably have a banana. I'm on my way out for a massive hike today. We have about 16 miles, I think. Um, something like that. See you on the peak. All right, we are in Mount Charleston, about to do a big, huge hike. All right, we are a quarter of the way up. We've got eight miles total to the peak, and that is where we're going. <laughs> it's just a few minutes away, so no problem. <laughs> Halfway to the top. Mm -hmm. Alright, we are about six miles in. Having a food break here. Got my banana. I just had an apple. And Pepe has the most genius thing ever. I have to show you this. This okay, it's not not completely nutritarian, but that's okay. Because we're hiking. So he has these um, he eats raw sweet potatoes, they're delicious by the way, and dips them in this most genius, wonderful, yummy thing ever, which is peanut butter plus honey plus raw cacao. It's like having Nutella on the top of a mountain after you just hiked six crazy miles. <laughs> it's the best. Air is pretty thin up here. We're getting close. <sighs> Having trouble holding the camera. I gotta go. All right. Final push. There's a summit up there. You can see that American flag. That's where I'm going. There's absolutely no air. <laughs> no trees up here at all. <laughs> See another couple right there hiking up. We passed them. Pepe is 73 and he is so much faster than I am. It's amazing. What an honor, man. This is my happy place. I'll see you at the top. <laughs> this is how hardcore. Oh, you did <laughs> <laughs> That's how hardcore Peppy is. <laughs> Alright, so we are at the summit, hanging out, and this is kind of an emotional time. Um, today is September 11th, and quite appropriately we have a beautiful flag up here. And I was in September 11th, I used to live in Manhattan at the time. Um, and it was a pretty difficult time for me so it's kind of emotional to be here right now but the hardest part for me is that the last time I was here 11 years ago I called my dad from the summit and he's no longer with us I can't call him again and I guess I'm as close to him as I can be right now so um sorry <laughs> so it's a little emotional for me to be up here but um, I know he's with me I know he can see me he was the greatest, greatest guy. Um, so, anyways, um, 
I hope you have a peaceful September 11th and uh, just wishing you greetings from the top of Nevada. We're almost at 12,000 feet, so um, no oxygen whatsoever, but I'm feeling good. I feel happy. Uh, this, is, this is a hard hike, but, uh, but it went really well, and we are going to go on our way down now. Thanks for coming along. Later, dudes. Yeah. It's a rock climbing. <laughs> oh my god, it looks so jacked up. <laughs> so I just got back from the hike a while ago, about an hour ago or something. Um, Pepe and I had some iced tea um, right when we finished here. We had some of that um, iced tea. I chose the one with sugar because I really wanted some calories. So we drank that all really quick and we parted ways. Came home, started stretching for a while, because, oh, my God, I just did 16 point, I guess it must be like 16.4 miles hiking. Um, but, dudes, it was like 4,000 feet of elevation gain or something. Like, no joke, it was insane. You can tell, like, I did, I did put um, lotion on, but clearly I should have reapplied a few times, it looks like, because I kind of got a little burnt. Um, it looks like but crazy elevation gain it was a super hard hike um except and it, like it was doable and everything and i've done this hike before and it was epic last time i did it, it was really bad like 11 years ago i wasn't in shape or anything and then i have a bad knee and so this time i wanted to do it again because i wanted to see like you know if my knee would be better and um the hike itself up to the peak hard but <laughs> Look, we have a little audience, a little, <laughs> she's taking advantage of the camera time. She wants to show off her eating skills. Um, so, uh, my house is like so messy, yikes. Um, but so anyways, we get to the top, and that was hard, but it wasn't like the worst thing. And then I was just worried, because the way down is always where my knee acts at. And it started to hurt. Um, but it took all, about two miles for it to start hurting, and that's, you know, about a quarter of the way down, which was cool because it took a little while. I didn't have it immediately like I did the first time I did this hike a long time ago. And then Pepe had all these really, really great tips. So he let me borrow his um, knee thing, the little, like, band that goes around his knee. Then um, he put, like, a cold rag. Like, we found a little stream, little, um, what do you call it, like a little... Um, kind of like a little waterfall thing, uh, spring or whatever on this side of this mountain, <laughs> you know, you know, just like random regular things you'd find. Um, so he dunked a handkerchief in there and tied that around my knee and then told me how to use my poles properly. I used both poles on the way down and actually it was totally doable. Like it was completely manageable. I couldn't believe it. Like it was so awesome because it was such a long way down after that point, it was still another six probably over six miles left to go and I had to just you know figure out how to get through it because the last time I did this hike epic it was the worst thing ever I was just really scared that I wasn't gonna make it down because I was hurting so bad and I didn't have any poles so I found a stick and like it was just bad so I was trying to like see if I could get through this hike again without having such an epic time and I totally did it was awesome and it's literally all thanks to Pepe like I was very very happy to get to hike with him and so thankful to be with such an expert he's incredible 
so that was very cool. I feel very accomplished. Um, and I came home, started stretching. I've been stretching for like an hour and just trying to keep, you know, keep my body um, in good shape. Hopefully I won't have to recover for too long. But so we ended up having an iced tea at a couple cliff bars. I had a banana, an apple, and then a bunch of the sweet potato with um, amazing chocolate, <laughs> peanut butter stuff that he has. And that's pretty much what I had for the journey. And I came home and I had this, like I have this Stanley container, you know, here, let me show you this sucker because it's amazing. Um, and it keeps things warm. So I had prepared it this morning and I was going to take it with me, but then I just, once I started packing my pack, I was like, that's way too heavy. I'm not bringing that with me. So I just opened it up now. It's like about, it's over 12 hours after I packed this thing, still warm. It's still warm. I'm so excited. I got some of the tailgate chili in here, so I'm going to eat this entire thing. Perfect. And then I might have a couple other things from the fridge, so I'll let you know later. But super cool day. And we had a pretty much nutritarian day, too, which is cool because Pepe is a nutritarian also, which is awesome. So it was really, really, really great. I felt very accomplished. Um, and it was really nice to be at the peak on a day like today, which is a little difficult and emotional, but wonderful and beautiful weather. Oh, so good. Okay, I'll stop gushing. <laughs> had a really good day. Thanks for following along. Bye. All right. These beans have, these beans have been sitting here for about over 24 hours now except I changed the water this morning. I'm just going to change the water out one more time, put some nice clean purified water in there just like this and cook them for another, I think it's going to take like two hours or something. All right, I'm boiling the beans, put them on high and then I'm reducing them so that they'll simmer. I just babysit them for a second to get them to simmer instead of boiling over with all this broth. And on my stove that's about at, I think it's around between four and five, that'll keep them sort of simmering but not boiling over. In this pan of beans, this pot of beans, I also added wakame, which is, um, here, get to see it over here, seaweed. <laughs> so I heard on a Facebook group that um, kombu, if you add kombu, which is a type of seaweed, um, it helps reduce gassiness with the beans. And I don't as much care about that because I don't have too many um, issues with beans, but I wanted to add it anyways because I thought, because they also add kombu in the Eden organic beans, and I think um, it's also good to add just a little bit of sodium, that's what it does too. So all I had, I didn't have any kombu, I just had the wakame, so I added some pieces of that. This is the kind of seaweed that is found in miso soup. And it's also really fun because here's what it sort of looks like in the package. You can get this at Whole Foods or um, health food stores usually in the Asian section. An edible ocean plant, it's so much fun. All right, look at what it looks like. Okay, look at this. It shows, um, like, when it's in the pack, it's like this these tiny little strands. Like, here's one of them. Uh, see that tiny little strand? And you just put it into water for a little while, and then it turns into those big, fat strands like this. Look. Look how big these are. And they just um, expand like this. So that's why you don't want to put too much in, because it expands so much. But I'm just going to try this and see if it adds any cool flavor. I hope it doesn't, like, ruin the whole thing. <laughs> just an experiment, but um, yeah, it's fun. I'll just um, remove the wakame when I'm done cooking these beans. When they say Anasazi beans, do they mean pinto? Because these look just like pinto beans. And they're just as creamy and amazing. These only took an hour and a half to make because I think of the pre-soaking. And um, actually, they taste so good. I think that com or the wakame that I used really, really added some good flavor. I'm just going to leave that in there because um, it's good for you. And I'm not able to pick it all out. <laughs> oh, I look amazing. <laughs> yeah, still super burnt. Anyways, so what I'm going to do with these beans is they're finished cooking. I'm going to let them, um, I'm going to drain them. Or wait, yeah, I'll probably just let them cool off for a while. And I'll drain them. And then I'll put them in pre-portioned bags in the freezer about a cup and a half to two cups per bag which is a good portion like that's a can size portion um, so I'll put those in the freezer so I can have them for later and then you can always just unthaw them when you're ready to use them just throw them in your fridge these are so yummy I really like these beans they're just like pin they taste exactly like pinto beans they're delicious 
I tried to relax and watch TV, but then I got starved. <laughs> Again, so I'm just having a bowl of the beans with magic spice mixture on it. And I'm probably gonna have more things after this. <laughs> All right, here's what I came up with. Um, got a romaine leaf here, put a bunch of the bean mixture on there with some avocado and tomato, and then I roll this up and then eat this. This is awesome. Now we're sharing this almond ice cream. Not super excited about it, but we're still eating it. So much for low sugar today. I'm not really excited about what happened at the very end of the night, but yeah. Whoa. Hello. <laughs> I got super, super hungry at the end, and I just felt like I couldn't stop being hungry. And then it turned into sugar cravings. So I tried to have like beans and stuff, and I probably had probably three quarters of a cup of beans or more with those lettuce wraps. I probably had like four of those with the little avocado and tomato and everything. I was trying to like get rid of that hunger, and I did well. I had like four of those things with just some regular spices and stuff, and then I went to go lay down for a bit longer, just watching some TV, and then I was like, <laughs> I started like rummaging through the house. I hate when it gets like that. I'm just like, ugh. And you know what's interesting? This is really funny. My friend and I were talking about this a while back. Um, I get so creative when there's not that much in the house, and I start to crave. I, that's where I end up like making up some really interesting, weird things. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're not as good. Um, but... I get like very creative when I get in that mode and unfortunately like I had something that was I had that Snickers bar from like forever ago I don't remember I think we got it when we first moved here it was in the cupboard or something for hiking but then um so let me know down in the comments do you ever get like super creative when you have nothing in your house and you start craving what are your techniques for craving because, I mean, it completely, like, varies all the time depending on what you're craving and what's going on or whatever, what you have in your house. But do you ever get, like, super creative and make up some really crazy recipe? Anyways, let me know down in the comments. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Oh, and um, thank you for being patient <laughs> with me as I'm not perfect. All right, Mo. Mm, she put her nose on me. Girls.